Hey guys, so with uh, Core Keeper 1.0 coming out uh, in August and uh, the new stuff coming along with it, I figured, or well, uh, the group that I play with kind of figured that like it would probably be about right about time to create a new world. So uh, I, I guess as a as a backstory, we've been, we've created this world uh, for the ocean biome update. Uh, all, the, all that time ago, we've been playing on this world for about a year now. Um, and you know, we've been to a few places around it. Uh, we've been, we haven't really been playing on it uh, a lot for about a year, but we've, but anytime an update's come out, we've sort of been on a two-week core keeper grind where we just. Hmm. Uh, where we just, you know, play a lot of the game, kind of have a good time, hang out, um, make builds and stuff, do various things like that. Sort of just, you know, play the game to our enjoyment. Uh, and with, since 1.0 is coming out and it's changing uh, a lot of the game, um, and adding so much, we thought that it might be time to finally retire this world. Uh, so I wanted to do a world tour uh, to sort of document and um, go to all the, you know, all the all the few places of interest that we have. Sort of just uh, make sure that even that even if we're not going to be playing on this world, I can still go back and watch the video and just you know remember all the all the things that we've done on the server. Um, I sort of have, an, uh, have a rough idea of how I want to go about showcasing everything, but I think I think I'm just going to kind of wing it. So I guess uh, okay. so I guess let's just start with the house. Uh, so the very first thing is we have on the left side over here. We have the NPCs. We have two money chests, which is some amount of money in them. Um, extra food for selling food. Sells for an unbelievable amount. Uh, yeah, so that's 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 so that's sort of the way that we make money is that we just kind of sell food and various other things. Um, you know, just my personal chest that I have. Uh, over here on the left, we have the storage room. There isn't really a whole lot of super organized storage going on, but we have sort of basic things for how we organize stuff. Nothing really special about it. We have some old tiles in here, like ground tiles that obviously you can't obtain anymore. Eh, sort of like contraband stuff like that. We have a bunch of rings, a bunch of necklaces. We have, I think this is a pet's chest and this is a bug chest. This is a pet's chest with a, uh, this, this, this egg is actually bugged. You can't hatch it. It's kind of funny. And we have all of our ores, things like that. Over here is the main crafting station. Nothing super special. We just have stuff in the chest. Down over here is our cooking area and our auto smelter. Any ores that we have. Uh, up there will eventually come out the bottom. So do I have any ores on me? I have some galaxite here. I'll put this galaxite up in this chest and then uh, maybe by the end it'll be. Some of it will be smelted and we can have a look. Over here we have kind of a, uh, a miscellaneous area. This is where we used to put all the old crafting uh, tables, such as all of the anvils and all the uh, Older workbenches in case we needed to craft any of those items before they added the uh, the tab through menu. This is such a nice thing, by the way. Tab through menu is great. Um, this is also originally our portal room. I just uh, I tried to make it look as nice as I possibly could. Um, and then here's just our event area, so we keep all the event stuff, as you might imagine. Up here, this is every single armor set in the game, uh, and we have the four tiles under them themed to that armor set. 
four tiles is my idea, but uh, it was Cypher that collected most of the armor in here and sort of, um, and you know, made sure to, to like put everything in a nice and orderly manner. The uh, beach set was actually particularly annoying to get because we, we wanted it to look nice, so we had to get uh, three glasses and three towels to make it all sort of fit together. Um, going through here... I think next I want to show off... Oh, here, this is Bean's room. He just has various things in here, nothing super interesting. I think next I will go to the arena. Is this a, I, don't, uh, I think we're just going to show off the different boss arenas now. So I could start with Glurch, but Glurch is just uh, there. There's nothing interesting there. Over here we have Malugaz. Just an empty hole with Malugaz. Um, now let's move on to Azeos. That's Ivy. Azeos is right here. I really like the little, um, Veen's kind of weird about uh, some stuff like this. He likes to have like rails going everywhere. He likes to label things. He likes to do like pixel art sort of like things like this. Like this is, uh, this is kind of goofy, but it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of neat, I guess. Just a bridge to nowhere. Uh, here we have Azeos' arena. Uh, these, these, I'm pretty sure these get broken during the fight. I don't know why we have these. Yeah, like, I don't know why we have these here. There's some extra random Azeos crystals, I guess. Some broken minecart tracks. These minecart tracks probably go up to Ivy. Yeah, they do. Where do these go? Oh my god! They go back to the house? For sure, man, for sure. All right. Uh, let's see what's next. I, I, guess, I guess I should probably only really show the interesting arenas that we have, because I, I like going to a random boss arena is a really interesting, like Ivy's. Uh... Oh. <laughs> so over here, I believe is the, um, yeah it is. So this is the, god, what boss is this called? Uh, is it, is it listed here? No. But anyway, so this is the, uh, uh, the bubble boss. I don't remember his name. Oh, it's Morpha. Morpha the bubble mass or something. So we left his, his arena intact. Um, like the outside walls and the, and the water around it. I think the water around it was actually something that I did to make it look nice. I don't really remember. Um, but enemies are nearby. Oh yeah, that guy. Um, but we decided to flatten his entire island. I don't know why we did this. Uh, but it's, it was kind of funny, I guess. I actually, I actually literally don't know why we did it. I don't, I have no idea what the purpose of this was. We did not need any walls, um, and yet we did it. Where's the topaz ring right here? For sure, man. I guess I'll just keep that. Um, we also literally removed an entire island for floors. Like if we go to, uh, where is it? We're looking for, oh yeah, here, so here's Omeroth's island. Um, Omeroth used to have a big part of the island that sort of went around here, where my mouse cursor is, but that's all gone. Uh, we used it for the farm, which I'll show off later. And if we actually go to... Uh, go to Omeroth's arena here. You can actually kind of tell that it's all gone because there's just a cutoff like right over here and there's just nothing else up here. Like like these walls literally serve no purpose unless there was, you know, formerly something over there. 
And if you walked in here, we have the entire the entire arena covered in galaxite flooring. Um, you could, you, I guess, you could do this for like literally anything, but it's easier to fight Omeroth on on flat ground than it is in a boat. Even though I do like fighting him in a boat. But next, let's move on to the desert. Uh, Raw Akara's arena isn't very interesting, but I figured I would show off uh, my punching bags arena. So here's Igneous's arena. Um, you may notice that all of the ceilings are gone. Uh, those were not made by the ceiling punching tool, which I don't have on me. They were actually made uh, by this build right here, which is just... Uh, a build entirely designed around um, getting as many critical hits as possible to get as many uh, as AS soul as possible, which uh, used to be the only thing that would open up the ceiling. So I eventually um, just punched. Oh yeah, it also <laughs> it also dug out these little like holes in the wall over here, like right there, all the way down there. Uh, this uh, we dug that on the man. This right here. And over here, because I because I, I just I just use Igneous as sort of like a uh, as like a DPS punching bag, and I have a few videos uh, that are up that you can go and watch of me um, absolutely annihilating this man. So poor Igneous, but he's just a big uh, a big boss that it just has a lot of health that I can just spawn on a whim and just damage chest on him. He's been a, he's been a, he's been a big help. He's been a really big help in finding what the what the best builds are. Um, I suppose while we're in the desert, I will go to the vault. So this is the vault. It's where we keep all of uh all of our well some of our sort of rare items, some of our uh, and all of our money. So all of these chests are just filled with money. Um, I don't really know why we did this. I think it's so. I think it's in case we ever somehow managed to run out of money at the house. But we just decided to keep them in here. Here we have the white whistle, uh, the Maiden Abyss reference. I love that anime. Really, really good. Uh, and the ancient pickaxe. Uh, and then we have a camp tent. We'll, we'll we'll get to the meaning of this camp tent later. Uh, then we have the oracle deck. This was uh, so the oracle deck was kind of, was kind of funny because there's obviously like trading cards in this game, and Veen uh, loves like board games and card games and stuff. Um, so he always kept them, and like me and Cipher always made fun of him, like, "Oh, why are you keeping all the cards, man? Like they don't do anything." And Veen's just like, "I just like them." So he just he just decided to keep them, and then eventually. You know, Desert Update comes out, we're like, what is this, uh, it should be, it's right here. What is this, like, random eye formation in here? And there's just, like, a dig side of the middle, like, we couldn't get into it yet, you know, because we didn't have the mining damage. Um, but it turns out, you know, we do, we do get into inside of it, and it has, like, the, the string in it, and it's like, oh, you can combine all the Oracle cards, and it's like, finally, <laughs> finally, they have, they have a purpose. Turns out it's just the Oracle deck, and this thing kind of sucks, but... It's neat. I should I should item level this while I while I'm here actually, uh, and then inside of these chests we have uh, is where we put all of our um, all of our like gemstones for item leveling. I love the I I absolutely adore the item leveling system in this game. I like how you can take anything and make it like end game viable. It's really awesome. Uh, I suppose I should also I don't know that there, there, there's many house. So I guess I can just teleport back to the house and then uh, I can level this thing all the way up and then put it back where it was. We've spent uh, so so we've played in this world for about a year now, sort of just progressing it further and further. And and as we've uh, as we've played it more and more, it sort of started to uh, it sort of sort of like break down at the seams. Um, a lot of things, uh, like the meadow biome spawn, unbelievably far from spawn, um, along with the crystal bombs as well, are incredibly difficult and annoying to reach. Like the the closest meadow biome is, 
uh, it's here, and that's just so far. Uh, oh no, it's it's actually it's actually right here. We actually marked it with the with the diamond marker because we, you know, it, it was the it was our only source of animals for a really long time. But eventually, uh, we were able to. Oh man, it was our only source of animals, and the and whenever the the animal update came out, the only you couldn't like easily transport them. So Cypro had to literally escort the animals thousands, and not thousands, but like hundreds of blocks, um, to our animal pen. And that was a that was a fun time to listen to, and it and sometimes the animal would die, and he just he just couldn't he just couldn't take it at a at a certain point, so he had to so he he stopped doing that after a, after a certain amount of time. But it was a uh, there's been some interesting things uh, that that we've decided to spend our time doing in this game, and all of them are were of course like you know enjoyable and fun, but it's. Uh, this game does quality of life very, very well, and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that it's in the state that it's in right now. I think it's very good, but unfortunately, the world is just old, and we need to uh, we need to move on. It sucks, but what can you do? Wow, that is still just not very good. Five health a second. This this alone gives me six. But I, I guess maybe the stacking together will be it would be nice. I suppose it's also an offhand. What do I have in my offhand? Well, why wouldn't you want range damage? Well, why wouldn't you want crit chance? Oh well. How much money do we have left in here? Enough. That's fine. Go put this back, and then I'll go over to the farm. So the two thing I, I actually actually now that I think about it, I think I built most of this stuff on the server. Uh bar one. Of course. I made I made the house um outside of the armor room, which was which was uh Cypher's, and then we sort of and then I sort of decorated it with the unique flooring. And then um I made the farm and I also made the vault. Um, and I think I, and even though I do like the house and I'm, I'm, I'm a very big fan of sort of what I've done with it in a lot of places, uh, my baby is just, is the farm. I, I spend so much time making the farm. And it's probably the thing that I'm going to remember of this world for the most. Wait, we have, we have four of that as rings? Wow. All right. Anyways, to the farm. So here's the farm on the map. Uh, it is just two farms wide, and it is taller than the dirt biome. It starts, uh, what was that, negative 182? Yeah, negative 182, and the dirt biome ends at negative 154, and the top is 150, and the farm top is, I, mean, I guess if we measure it here, it's at 114, but at the very top is 134. Okay, so it's, I mean, it, it is definitely larger, or at least taller than the dirt biome, but maybe it doesn't stretch all the way from bottom to top. Uh, or I guess lower and then like end higher. So before we go up there, I'm going to come down here. Uh, this is our farm area, uh, or our, um, our like animal area. Just have a bunch of our animals. We just, just gave them names. And just collect everything in here. Uh, this place is, isn't exactly the most uh, sort of orderly, um, as getting animals here was difficult enough on their own. Is that a baby sheep? Oh, that's so cute! But yeah, we sort of made this sort of ma uh, makeshift meadow biome. We absolutely just pilfered one of them and just destroyed it, um, and brought the and then we brought the animals over here. Uh, and you know, gave them a new small home. So here's the farm. Each one of these farms is fifteen by fifteen, uh, with nine sprinklers. Uh, each farm holds 216 plants, 
Um, well, e well, each farm is uh, is two twenty five total tiles, but obviously nine of them are sprinklers. Um, let me think. Uh, I don't really know exactly how many plants it gives us per minute, but like as you can kind of tell from what we have, uh, it's it 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 is quite a bit. This uh, it has every single crop that you could ever uh, in the entire game, and anything that you could need to harvest them easier. Like here, we have the the ring and the necklace to harvest the mold easier. Or the, the fungi. Here we have the carox. Here we have the bloat oat. Here we have the grumpkins. Getting these seeds was an absolute nightmare. A waking nightmare. I value these two farms more than almost anything ever, and, or more than more than almost anything in this game. These two farms alone are hours of grinding. I, you know, I really, I really like the seasonal events, but man, they they need they need they need something to like help with help with the loot. Uh, and then here we have the glow tulips. And so on the Core Keeper Discord, they have uh, a sort of trading section, and the sort of currency that you have, is, or that the most like, uh, sort of like the de facto currency is gold and glow tulips, because everybody likes doesn't like placing down torches; they like to walk around with glow. So we have uh, the so we have uh, four or I guess eight farms because it's four rows of them. Of just of just straight glow tulips, and we have a portal in the middle, in the almost the exact middle uh, of the farm, exactly in the middle of the, where the glow tulips are, so we can harvest them easier. And in this vest, we probably have a few glow tulips and then a few uncooked golden glow tulips. And then as we move up, we have the uh, these are the pine grapples. These increase your range damage. So we have uh, four farms of these. I've spent quite a bit of time in here. And then right above it, we have the, where are these the pine gravels? Oh, these are the pine gravels. And then down here must be the pea pies then. Yeah, pea pies. So pine gravels are melee damage. That's why they look like a fist, I guess. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. Uh, and then since obviously since it's melee damage, we have four farms of these as well. And then up here, we have the most recent farms. Here we have sunrise and then we have lunicorn. So sunrise is actually like the best plant in the game. It gives you like four, uh, like three or four like crazy benefits. I don't remember what they are off the top of my head because it's been, it's been a while since I've played. Uh, I so I suppose what I can do is I can take a golden sunrise and then probably just grab a um, pine grapple, hook these together, see what it gives me. Since I know the pine grapple's melee damage and attack speed, so what does this give? <laughs> Uh, so it gives glow damage against. Okay, does that say? This has so this food has two instances of increasing <laughs> melee attack speed on it. So, uh, so it looks like sunrise grants glow damage against bosses and melee and range attack speed, and then the pine grapple part of that is the damage and attack speed, and then the health is combined and then the food stat. So let me tell you, man. Sunrise, insane. The easily the best, easily the best crop in this game, bar none. Uh, I don't remember what what this gives you. I think it's like dodge or something. But wow, they've optimized this game a lot. But Lunicorn's a uh, a very very good crop as well. But but you know, Sunrise is just just the goat in many many ways. Um, also, this farm is kind of a. <gasps> Well, they fix it. All right, so I my motivation for this farm was, or well, for the farm was really really down for a while because for a long time this was, uh, this was a bugged block that turned into an obsidian block, so I couldn't break it. So my motivation for getting all of the uh, sunrise was just completely gone. Uh, but now that, now that it's not that, I'm gonna finish the farm. I will finish actually building it. And I'm not going to walk down there because I have a teleporter down there.
Yeah, I don't I don't know what update changed that from an obsidian to like an actual fixed block, but in this chest I have the one singular crystal ground that was left because we because we always got well we tended to get the exact amount that you needed for it. So I just had one crystal ground left in here um for that spot in the farm. For if it for if we ever I was I was thinking about just cheating del and deleting the obsidian because it wasn't originally there, it was a bug block. But I guess, you know, now I can just place it. There you go, it's done. Uh, oh, and then also under all of these sprinklers uh, is a, it's one of those. And under all of these corner blocks, uh, we have a glowy floor. And this goes for under all of that. It just adds a little bit of like nicer lighting to it. You don't really notice when you have you know, a bunch of glow. Let me take off all my glow. This is glow as well. Do I have any other glow? From like random four. From what? A necklace. So you don't really notice it a whole lot, but you can notice it sort of on these. Oh, so I think above the sprinklers is an open ceiling. Yeah, it is. Oh, those floor tiles are incorrect. Well, that's fine. Well, the sprinklers is an open ceiling except for these ones for some reason. Um, and then above all the, and then in all of these sort of halfway markers and corner pieces is, is glow. Is a glowy floor. Just some very, very small details that we added to make the farm just, just a little bit, just a little bit nicer. Yeah, I spent, I spent a long time making this farm and it's, it's really, it's gonna suck, uh, seeing it go. But uh, the world is it's just it's just too old. It's like it's like whenever you've had a Minecraft world since like 1.8, you know, and they and they're just introducing the like caves and cliffs part two, so the world gen changes and it's you know it just it just kind of it's just a time when it's like well we kind of got to make a new one. Um, but I guess even more info on the farm. Uh, there's around it is just complete water. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the farm is isolated from the world so we didn't have to deal with any enemies walking in. So we put a wall around the farm, put a moat around the farm, uh, just basically removed an entire section of the world that used to even have a minecart uh, running through it. Just got, we just made them, we just made the minecart go around it. Oh, never mind. We just, we, uh, so initially the farm only extended up to here where, where uh, the section of the minecart is. But then, you know, the crystal mime update came out, uh, and I guess we just never, we never made the mic dirt go over it again. Oh well, it happens. But yeah, that's the, that's about it, uh, for the farm at least. And now, where to next? I think, alright, I think, I think it's time to go to the last place. So the last, so I, I, I wanted to save, um, wanted to save the, the best, the best part for last year, because, uh, this last part holds a very, very special place, uh, in my friend's heart, and it is, it is probably the most, um, uh, has the most character out of, out of any part of the server. Uh, oh, also underneath all the house, uh, the entire house is made out of, um, is made out of uh, what are these wooden bridges, and so we have a bunch of water under the house because we had this uh, we had this fishing area right here, and we thought that it'd be nice if we had a little like fishing area in the house. We never we never actually used it, at least not very often, but it's there. And so under all the house is water, um, but because of where we're about to go, uh, you may notice that around the house that the outside of the house is entirely covered in uh, grass blocks. To make sure that no other liquid gets inside and ruins the fishing pool, and here's why. So under so under the house, we have Schittsburg. Um Now, uh, Schittsburg was created and founded, and ran and expanded upon by uh, by my my good friend Cipher, and this is sort of his. Uh, uh, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's one of his favorite things that he's ever made. 
Um, you may notice that, uh, as was earlier, I mentioned that, that my chests are in this room with this guy. I just kind of put him in here. And then out here, or well, over here, I guess. This is Vien's room behind the portal. These are all of, all of his stuff. Um, what block is that? What is this? Crystal crust? Why does he have this? Whatever. But um, out here, uh, right beneath the house, these are Cypher's chests. And they're just sort of in Schittsburg. Um, So I guess, let's that's, that's start on the right side. So over here we have Budweiser Lake. And then as you can see right there, we have the uh, the grass blocks outside the house keeping Budweiser Lake in Budweiser Lake. Um, and here we have Piss Island. <laughs> Um, and then we have the, uh, we have the environmental storytelling that Corkyver is so good at, by the way. Uh, we have the environmental storytelling of some dude coming over here to take a dump, and he just has, like, acidic piss, and he just, like, turns into a skeleton after, after pissing. Um, so, poor bastard just didn't really know what, what was gonna hit him, but, you know, it, it really just, it really just happens to the best of us. Uh, over here we have uh, it's just just uh, an encampment sort of. Oh, let me let me drink some or eat some. Whoa! Uh, it's just sort of the the Schittsburg outskirts where you know things are just sort of getting started, if you will. Uh, on the right side is mostly just the slums. We've got tents everywhere. You have random hoed ground. You got plants everywhere. You have the Budweiser Lake with a random radioactive thing in it. I don't even... Hold on, what, what is this? What is this? No, not you. What is this? I've never seen this before. Enchanted Rose? I, I've literally never seen this item before. I have... I don't even know. I don't even know where this could have come from. But, oh, we have another toilet right here. <laughs> uh, it's just where all the tents are. And then over here on the left, uh, we have... The throne, uh, the Schittsburg throne. Um, so the people that inhabit Schittsburg are the cavelings. And so this is, we got their throne right here. We have the guards. We have a, <laughs> a Malugaz spawner and a, and a charred caveling skull. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say another thing. I don't, I don't deserve it. I'm not the king of Schittsburg. Um, here we have bombs on a table. Um, the people of Schittsburg, uh, let me see, let me see if I can find the thing. There's a, there's a very funny thing somewhere. Looking around for it, I don't really see it, it just kind of sucks. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll see it uh, later on, I'll point it out. Um, but if we, so we have the slums on the right side now, if we go over to the left side, we have uh, more advanced. This place is annoying to walk around in, by the way. We have. Oh, yeah, here it is. So the cavelings don't really understand torches. Uh, so they just put a torch um, on a pedestal <laughs> trying to make it work. It, it, seem, it seems they figured it out eventually, but it must have taken them a while. Where do, I, where do I go? They have gold. They think that gold is just the coolest thing ever. Um, here we have sort of like cabling society where it's more stone. You know, you go from the Dirt Age to the Stone Age. Um, and then if we travel down over here, oh, and it's also just thrown inside of more Budweiser Lake. If we go uh, go over here more, we have, um, what's up here? This is another island? Oh, okay. And then if we go over here, we have uh, the mines. Um, you know, the cabling's just... They just really like mining. They, you know, they, they, they yearn for the mines. So we have, you know, a bunch of rocks. We have another uh, grass block partition. Uh, I believe they're actually, I believe the lore of this is that, let me get rid of the seed, uh, is that they're actually worshiping this little statue. I don't know why, but the cave, you know, the people of Schittsburg are just very cultured. Um, you know, they have, they have a long history of, 
of a you know long I I can't I can't say anything with a straight face in this place. Just give me a give me a break here, alright? Uh and then over here. Uh, and then over here we have the very last thing. This is the fishing area. Uh, Cypher also made the fishing area where you can sort of walk out in these docks and fish. Uh, so here we have normal water. Here we have Budweiser water. Here we have the itis water or mold. Uh, and then here we have lava. And then we have the shimmer water. And then we have the ocean water. And ocean water is not regular water, which we thought it was for a long time. It is not. Do not ask us how we figured that out. Um, and so all of and so most of this water, except for the shimmer, I believe, uh, was actually irrigated here uh, by Cypher himself. So if we look at the map, we can actually see uh, the lava. Earlier, the lava like tunnel that was just dug out that's like a thousand, like two thousand blocks long. I eh, mean, it's only like seven hundred actually. I don't really understand distance in Pokemon very well. That's besides the fact. But he irrigated it all the way from this lava pool right here, and then brought it all the way over. There's another one. Uh, this one right here. I think this is um ah. Yes, okay, so if we, hold up, let's travel here, wait, do I have my go-kart on me? No, I don't, I'm pro I'm, I probably walk faster than a go-kart anyways. Okay, then move on. So if we walk down uh, over here, might take a bit. I don't I don't actually know when Vien and Cypher explored so much of the of the stone bomb. I don't remember that happening. But if we go over here you'll actually notice that Cypher messed up at one point and just filled this entire area with Idas water. Um it was a mistake of course but it happened unfortunately. Uh, and then, and then right here is the original tunnel that he dug. He made sure he was a lot better about it. I'm around here, made sure that it didn't escape, and then irrigated it back to spawn. And the Budweiser, it was irrigated from here. You can see the line right here. I think. Okay, so that must have been a small river inside of the side of the biome. And then he dug it over here. Probably just followed the line down. Yeah, so it's probably along here somewhere. It eventually, the Budweiser one actually did eventually get sort of cleaned up and fixed over time, uh, but none of the, none of the other ones were ever actually uh, changed in any way. We just kind of left them here, but it's it's an it's a nice relic of the past of something that like people don't really have to do anymore. Uh, oh, I guess I must have gotten shifted up at some point from here to here. But yeah, I think I think that just about concludes everything. So yeah, this is just uh, a nice way of sort of documenting the world, and I hope that when I when I watch this or any of the other members of the server uh, watch this later, they'll be able to like, you know, uh, they'll be able to like sort of remember it uh, in the same way that I will. And uh, I'm very glad for what this world has brought. Uh, almost almost all the time that I spent in this world has been um, sort, of, sort of a privilege almost. I, 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 feel, I feel as if I do not deserve uh, how many happy memories this game has brought me. Um, I'm really, I'm really gonna, gonna miss this one, man. This is, I, I've never really, I've never really, uh, kind of, sort of felt this way before. Cause I know, like, some people have like, 
Oh yeah, we have like this like Minecraft world like a, a few years ago we played on it a lot, but I never really I always understood in a way that like uh something like that would be like special to them, but I never really had one of my own. I feel like this is this is the one of my own. Um where I spent oh I should go look at the Ambogus. I feel like this is like the the world that I spent enough time on and made enough memories on that like uh that like it is it is going to be meaningful to me when it's gone. So I figured that uh that I should probably do a world tour of it before before it is actually gone. Um and you know I'm I'm very very and I I I think I think I might be uh the one uh the most ex excited person for 1.0 other than maybe some of the developers being very excited to share it with the world. But I am absolutely ecstatic to see what what, uh, what Pugstorm does uh, in August. Or, well, I guess ha what Pugstorm has been working on for the past uh, few months. And I think that if any game, and, or I guess, I don't, I don't think there's a game on the market right now with a brighter future than this. Um, and... I don't know, I just, there's just, there's something about this game that I haven't really been able to find in other games like it. Um, oh, there's just another island that we just completely decimated. The portal's still there. Hold on, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go look at that. But I am, I am absolutely... Uh, excited for the future, even if you know. I wish, I I wish that we could just. <sighs> yeah, it's the it's just gone. It's the, whatever whatever this island was is just gone. Um. I, I I sort of wish that we could have, uh, have this world forever. But I but I know sort of deep down in my heart that like, if you do play on a world forever, eventually. You know, the game is just gonna get updated and eventually it will sort of get boring and then you may never come back, but the only the only real way to keep going, for me at least, is to eventually just sort of start something new. And I'm very, you know, I'm, I absolutely love this world and everything. Uh sort of all the all the things I'm gonna remember from it, but you know, if if it means I'm I'm able to experience the game, if it, if it means I'm able to sort of like experience the game again like I did with this, then I think uh, I, I I think I think I'm open to it. Um, let's say let's grab a look at the Galaxite. Is the Galaxite done? Yes, it is. Fantastic. I bet I made this auto smelter by the way. Fantastic auto smelter. One of the one of the best things I've ever I've ever I ever put on the server. Um, but yeah, we have a nice little collection of figurines, not all of them, but most of them. No. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna miss this world, but I'm glad that, uh, I was able to document, uh, at least most of it. All the, all the important parts, I think, I don't think I missed anything small. I should probably just go over, tab around, look at stuff. What is that? I'll go, I'll go around there later and look, and look at it. Um, you explored very, very far. I think I think I've explored the furthest because I I was over here earlier, uh, looking for rubies. Hmm. But yeah, that's that's just about everything. Oh well, okay. I should I should go over and have a look up over there. I'm gonna take the car. Here we have uh oh here we have the um what is this the uh so the the glitch arena which doesn't really matter because yeah you know, he dies in two seconds anyways and here we also have where where we make all of our pets. What do we got in this guy? Huh. That's not too bad. 
I mean, I would never use this. I, if it, if it was five of these, that'd be crazy. Um, but that's a good owl. I'll keep him. And I think, uh, I think it's, in a way, it's it's kind of nice to say that I did have uh, a Minecraft world type thing where, you know, it's something that me and my friends spent a long time on. And that, and that it'll be it'll be something that I will remember for probably the rest of my life, um, and hopefully, you know, ho hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully this video can can sort of serve as a uh, as a as a nice sort of like remembrance thing, and I'm you know as a as a that earlier I'm just I'm absolutely excited for Pokeeper 1.0 I think um, and, I, and I know and I know that my that, that my uh, friends are too and I've even made this little like mob farm thingies they obviously don't work very well because um, mob farms in this game this game this game feels like very anti mob farm like the spawning system doesn't really support them very well not necessarily an issue, but oh, and here we have our <laughs> our broken wood farm. It uh, the, this wood farm still like works, or at least the design works fine. But we had some cavelings come along and just re ruining it. Um, but like we still have all the all the resources from it. And, like that's more than enough, like to last us almost forever. I don't think I meant to fit through that. Oh yeah, we didn't put any doors on the top of this place after we added the uh. After we added the armor, the armor room. There's just no more. There's no way to access the top. But yeah, that's that's just about everything. So if I, if I forgot something, that's uh, that's a future me thing to be sad about. Uh, as this video has been dragged on long enough, so I'm gonna end it here. Hopefully, um. Hopefully when I, you know, hopefully something, man. Hopefully something. Hopefully one point is good, but I don't. I, I just don't see a world where it's not. I. Uh, if any, if any, if any, I don't. I don't think there's been any game that's brought me enough uh, as much joy as this game has, and I'm very, very glad to see that. Uh, that it's you know that it's not going to be an early access jail forever, and that. And that I know for certain uh, that the game is in very good hands, and I hope and I, and I hope it stays that way. So, yeah, I guess. Here's to uh, here's to one next month. I think I think it'll be really good. <laughs>